Hi everyone, this is Samson. Today I'm gonna do something different from before. I'm gonna introduce you guys the Yangzhuang language, which I believe you have never heard about. Let's get started. 街口要黑Samson,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,蒙水黑Ian,
From the beginning of the 21st century, the Yang Zhuang people started to make their modern music. One of the most popular songs is called Shi Zheng De Bao, which means De Bao Love Song. It contains a verse of Nyam Shi Yi. Check out the link in the video description and see if you can spot it out. Now, let's start looking at some features of the language. Phonology Yang Zhuang has inherited quite a lot of phonological features from its ancestor language, proto tai One of them is preglottalized consonants. These consonants can be realized as implosives. To pronounce implosives, the glottis moves downwards and produces an aggressive airflow. Or, alternatively, the preglottalized consonants can be simply pronounced by adding a glottal stop before the main consonant. Let's hear some examples. Bao, meaning boy. Lai, meaning to be able. Yo, meaning to be at. Some of these consonants are found in Tai, Lao, and Standard Zhuang, but have been completely lost in Shan, the Hong Tai, and most urban Zhuang languages. Even in the Jingxi urban dialect of Yang Zhuang, these consonants have been lost. These words are pronounced as mao, nai, yo, respectively. Like other Thai languages, Yang Zhuang is a highly tonal language. Most dialects have six phonetic tones. In the De Bao urban dialect, all phonetic tones are illustrated by the sentence Son moi kun ma gua da ba tap ga klok. The first six syllables illustrate all possible tones already. Then, what are the last four syllables for? In fact, if a syllable ends with P, T, or K, it can take less tones than other syllables can. Here in the De Bao urban dialect, they can only take two distinct tones, as in Ba and Ga. However, in some dialects, these four syllables may be pronounced with four different tones, the first two tones, illustrated by Chlon and Moi, are category A tones. Category A tones are important in the rules of Nyam Shi poems. Let's take a look. As we've seen just before, each group takes turn to create verses. In each round, a group sings two sentences of seven syllables each. The first sentence in a round is called the upper sentence, and the second is called the lower sentence. Here are two rounds of a Nyam Shi poem. Notice that I will read the poem in the De Bao Ma Ai dialect, which is commonly used for oral traditions. A difference between the De Bao Ma Ai dialect and the De Bao urban dialect is that tone 1 illustrated by Xuan is pronounced as Xuan in the Ma Ai dialect with a high falling pitch and some tone 1 words in the urban dialect take tone 2 in the Ma'ai dialect. Let's begin. Gao gao moi moi son de tai Ni ni ngo ngo tai bek lai Ban bei rao zo yang lan ao Pou ge sao bao jing shi nai The first round of a yam shi poem is called Zhang Go. Zhang Go is the foundation of a poem because it decides the rhyme to be used throughout the whole poem. The final syllables of the two sentences have to rhyme with each other and they have to be in the category A tone. In this poem, Tai rhymes with Lai and they both carry a category A tone. The non-initial rounds of a Nyam Shi poem have a different format. Only the last syllable of the lower sentence has to rhyme with the previous round, and it has to carry a category A tone. As you see here, Nai rhymes with Lai, but Ao doesn't. 
However, the non-initial rhymes have a rhyming requirement called waste foot rhyming. Waste foot rhyming contains a foot rhyme and a waste rhyme. The foot rhyme is the last syllable of the upper sentence. The waste rhyme can be one of the syllables in the lower sentence except the last, and the fourth syllable is considered the best. The foot rhyme and the waste rhyme must rhyme with each other, and they cannot carry a category A tone. Here, ow is the foot rhyme and bow is the waste rhyme. Waste foot rhyming poems are found in most related languages such as Thai. Thai Lu and Northern Zhuang languages, therefore, it can be considered as a tradition of the Proto-Thai society. We still haven't talked about the meaning of the poem. Now I'm gonna give you some background knowledge in order to make you understand the poem better. The Yang Zhuang people don't simply address each other by the personal pronouns Gao and Moi, which means I and you respectively. It's considered rude to address them this way unless the speakers know each other very well. Actually, there are formal versions of the personal pronouns "me" and "mo," which mean "you" and "I" respectively, and they are Chinese loans. They are commonly used by strangers to express politeness. Instead, it is common to address people by kinship terms or their titles. Some common examples are "bei," which means elder sibling, and "nong." Which means younger sibling. If two people are of similar ages, the younger person should call himself nong, and call the older person bei, and vice versa. If two people are about a generation apart, kinship terms like lan, meaning nephew, yi, meaning aunt, and ao, meaning uncle, are used. This way of addressing people is found in related languages like Thai and Lao, but not in Northern Zhuang languages. Now, here comes the translation of the poem. Saying "gao" and "moi" sounds very rude. Saying "ni" and "ngo" sounds too strange. So we should call each other uncle and nephew. Old people, girls, and guys always greet each other. Vocabulary. The vocabulary of Yang Zhuang comes from different sources. There are seven identifiable layers. They are a cross substrate, native Thai, Old Chinese, Middle Chinese, Southwestern Mandarin, Cantonese, and Standard Mandarin. In chronological order, we will begin with the cross substrate. Cra is another branch of the Cra Dai language family. Which Yang Zhuang ultimately belongs to. Some Yang Zhuang words of possible Kra origin are, "dun" and "dum," meaning this and that. This makes Yang Zhuang interesting because it is the only Thai language that does not use native Thai words to mean this and that. The native Thai layer is the major source of vocabulary. It mainly contains words that represent fundamental concepts and concrete objects. Some examples are "bai" and "wan," meaning "to go" and "day." If you speak Thai, you may already recognize that they are cognates with "bai" and "wan," which have the same meanings. Most numbers in Yang Zhuang are borrowed from Old Chinese. The Yang Zhuang word for six is "kia." The consonant "kia" strongly suggests that it is borrowed from Old Chinese "gro." This layer contains concepts that exist in a basic society. An example is "xiu," which means book. The cognates of "qiu" and "xiu" in Thai are "hou" and "si," as in the word "nang si." The Middle Chinese layer contains words to express slightly more abstract ideas. For example, "xiu gan" is the word meaning time. The same word is reborrowed in the southwestern Mandarin layer as "si gan." The southwestern Mandarin layer is the largest among all Chinese layers because it was a teaching language in the early modern era. Therefore, it contains words to express an early modern society. It also has systematic correspondence with the phonology of Yang Zhuang. One more example is "kai si," meaning to start.
The Cantonese layer is relatively small, and it doesn't have systematic correspondence with the phonology of Yang Zhuang. The word for to have a haircut is fei yi in the Bao urban dialect, but spelt with a different tone marker with a grave accent in Jingxi urban dialect even they are pronounced in the same way. Finally, the standard Mandarin layer contains mainly words having at least three syllables. Therefore, many proper nouns enter the language as a standard Mandarin layer. Grammar The basic word order of Yang Zhuang is SVO, which is the same as English. Let's take a look at the following example sentence, meaning, I had a meal. Gao Gin Kao A word-by-word -word translation is, I eat rice. Yang Zhuang is an analytic language. It means that words do not change their forms to express grammatical meaning. Therefore, the verb gin can refer to an action happening in the past or the future. To say something that happened in the past, one may add a word indicating the past like wan ngua, meaning yesterday. So we have wan ngua gao gin kao, meaning I had a meal yesterday. And we have wan biu gao gin kao, meaning I will have a meal tomorrow. Notice that the verb gin itself doesn't change. However, there are still ways to add meanings to a verb. To indicate a finished action, we add the particle ya after the object. Therefore, gao gin kao ya means I have had a meal. To indicate an action that have been done completely, we add leo instead. For example, gao gin kao leo means I have eaten the meal completely and there is no leftover. An interesting fact about the verb gin is that it can mean to drink or to eat depending on the context. This is very common in Thai languages, but it might be a striking fact even for linguists. Let's take a look at another example. A word-by-word -word translation is He or she be person good. The whole sentence means He or she is a good person. Notice that the adjective comes after the noun, unlike English. To negate the sentence, we add may before the verb and now after the object. The whole sentence will become now, meaning he or she is not a good person. Another interesting fact we see here is that Yang Zhuang uses the same word for he and she. It might be a striking fact for linguists, too. Negation becomes tricky when it comes to the verb mei, meaning to have. This word looks exactly the same as the negation particle mei. To say, I have books in Yang Zhuang, one says gao mei shou To express to not have, we use a special structure mei nao plus the noun plus the particle now. Therefore, I don't have books would be gao mei nao shou nao in Yang Zhuang. Let's see how nouns work in Yang Zhuang. We already know that xiu is the word for book. If one just says the word xiu, it refers to the general idea of books, but it doesn't specify any number of books. It could be just one book or ten books. It could be a specific book or any book. If you want to mention a specific book, you add the classifier for books, se before the noun. Then you will say This usually translates to English the book. However, sometimes it may also mean an indefinite book depending on the context. Now, let's specify the number of books. We use the structure number plus classifier plus noun. So we have for two books and for three books. However, for the number one, we put the number after the noun instead. So one would say leo or yo, where o is a reduced form of leo and comes after the noun. This structure only works for the number one and can be found in related languages such as Thai. Finally, we will learn how to say this book and that book. 
Yang Chuan has three demonstrative adjectives: dun, gu, and dun. Dun translates to this in English. Gu and dun both translate to that in English, but dun indicates a further object than gu. To say this book, we use the structure classifier plus the noun plus demonstrative adjective, which is one of dun, gu, and dun. Therefore, this book would be seklui dun. Before the end of the video, I would like to ask you guys a question: What kind of videos would you like me to make? I've decided to make another video comparing Yang Zhuang and Tai for the next episode. And I'm also fine with making videos about what languages I'm learning recently and how I learned them. Please let me know in the comment section. To wrap things up, I will let you guys listen to the story, the North Wind and the Sun in Yangzhuang, so that you can have a better idea about what spoken Yangzhuang sounds like. This story is called Lam Pring Wa Ta Wan in Yangzhuang. It is translated and read by my Yangzhuang teacher Ao Bao. Mei Wan No. Lâm hèn và thá văn yêu tầm tung chén giả, kiêng hỏi á qua. Lông kiêng tế, ngâm thân mây phấu con nâu phải qua mà. Còn tầm ní, nông cung lưu tông ngâu. Lông kiêng tế chào yàn giả lạ. Phói hỏi hỏi con tầm thốt cung lưu tông tầm ô côn. Phói hỏi chào á qua. Bần bấy ní. Lâm hèn chào bốc mừng bao lâm ạ. Phói rào ná, tế vịt bao, kiang còn tầm chào vịt cốt cùng lưu tông tầm khẩu bái mân hèm. Tóc lăng, lâm hèn hát ngay cơ bộ đáy, lê chai lạ. Kém lăng, thá văn ngâm ốc mà áo ấy đế tế lê lông mạ ấy chít tàu, còn tầm lê thót cùng lưu tông tầm ốc nhằm mà tốc lạ. That's the end of the video. Thank you and see you in the next episode.